Hello friends, let's now start another CPU scheduling algorithm which is based on priority and here the selection function is the priority and if the priorities are same then we go for the one which have the least arrival time then if the arrival times are also same then we go for the one which have the less least service time and unfortunately if they are also same then we select the process which is first in the array or the memory okay now I expect you to be gone I expect that you have already gone through my previous two videos regarding first come first serve and shortest process next so as I stated early the program is divided into three parts so the first part will take the inputs and sort it according to the arrival times and calculate the total time required to complete this all processes and the second part will find the completion time of each process and third part will find the turnaround time, waiting time, net turnaround time, average turnaround time, average waiting time and display them in a table of form. So as we go through the program let's do as usual when we starting with the output how the output looks for this program so let's begin now let the let me take three process unlike other programs we also have to mention the priority of the process its name and arrival time and service time so let the process be say three name be two name arrival time b2 so this time b3 the next process i'm giving a random numbers so you have seen we have given the priorities as 3 4 and 5 next names as 2 2 and 4 and arrival time 2 1 2 and service time 3 1 1 as you could see in some cases the service time is same and in some other cases the arrival times are same as you have seen in the output they are sorted according to their arrival times which is very good for us next uh, and they are even as you could see they are executed according to their priority if you would see process p name 2 has arrived at 1 and it has a priority of 4 since at that time no other process entered the system so process first process that is set 2 will be executed so its completion time is 2 because its service time is 1 and it is arrived at 1 the completion time is 2 next comes at 2, 2 process have entered the system that is both this 2 and the 4 now we have to select the process with priority that is the 3 or 5 so since we have 3 is more priority we are selecting it and we are executing it so the completion time is 5 then later this process that is the 4 process is executed completion time is 6 so now let's jump into the program as I've already said, this is the first initialization variables. Okay. Next comes the structure data, which is used to represent processes. These are the function definitions or function declarations. I mean, next this is the main program where you find where you take the inputs, arrange them according to their arrival times, and calculate the total or total time and next call the finding function now coming to this part this is our finding function it's actually pretty bigger than the previous things because a lot of stuff is included in it so let's see what the finding function has to offer for us initially it also works on the basic same principle that is 
the time should be less than less than the total time and i have previously told you how to calculate the total time so we won't be wasting time in explaining the same stuff again and again j is initialized to zero just as in the previous one that is that is spn short is process next and we are finding which process have entered into the system using this code that is by comparing if the arrival time is less than or equal to the present time and we take j equal to j plus 1 and the reason for this we are assigning j equal to 0 for every iteration is that we have a condition that the process selected only if j is greater than 0 if we won't initialize this to 0 then once we have use this instruction every time this if loop will be executed if block will be executed to avoid this we are initializing we are assigning j equal to 0 okay we want to use this command you can always ignore the command times if there is an instruction in it and if there is just text it might be important so keep in mind next again here our motive is to find the process that is x with minimum priority that is if you are thinking that 1 has the highest priority then minimum priority if you think 5 has the maximum priority then you have to take as max priority it depends upon your thinking next we again have a for loop and we compare with each and every process that are presently available and we check which has the minimum priority and if any other pro any other process has a minimum priority we scrap the variables and if there are process with the same priority then we check their arrival times as shown here let's show you i'll show you the if block quickly yeah now if there is any process with equal priority like this one then you go for their arrival times that is if you check you check if the arrival times which has greater arrival time or lesser arrival time if even their arrival times are similar then again you go for service times and there is no condition to check if the service times are equal okay now i hope you have understood till now by how to select the priority i mean the one with the minimum priority then we are adding time to the service time this is because this priority scheduling algorithm is a non primitive algorithm that means once a process started it executes until it is completely executed that means no one can interrupt it so instead of incrementing time one by one we are directly incrementing by the service time that is we assume that the process has complete completed its execution next we have to specify the uh, completion time that is we are doing by this step of the present process next we are incrementing the process uh, priority by 1000 and arrival time by 1000 the reason for this is very simple as in uh, spn shortest process next so that this x process will not be again selected we are incrementing it by 1000 if at all there is no process to be selected that means if the arrival time of a process is 2 first process is 2 and the current time is 0 first time 0 1 until 2 comes the time is just incremented by 1 and 1 and so on ok now after all this is this is all a loop and this goes on until all the processes are finished so how do we know that the processes have finished this is by total time if everything goes according to the way it is then the time would be equal to the total time and the while loop will and the control comes out of the while loop and after coming out as we know we have incremented the priority and the arrival times by 1000 now we have to again decrement each and every priority and arrival time of each and every process next again we are calling the function display which display which calculates and displays uh, all these things that is priority, p name, arrival time, service time, turnaround time, completion time, waiting time, net turnaround time, average waiting time, average turnaround time. 
I hope you have understood. If you have any problems understanding or if you have any doubts, you can comment me. I will always be ready to help you. And the code of this program will be available with the download link. You can use that. Thanks for watching.